My name is Jennifer Yasano Putai. I'm a senior medical officer with um, Greater Accra Regional Hospital, specifically the emergency department. And I am so happy today to be on Just for Women Africa. I'm smiling because I was practically coerced into doing medicine by my dad. It has been a dream of his to see his daughter be a doctor. So being the only daughter, I had to take up the mandate. So yes, um, he, it wasn't easy to say yes. It was, it was quite a, a whole big issue between myself and my dad. But with time, as obedient daughter that I am, well, I accepted it and I haven't regretted since I did. Um, my journey began with a phone call from Ghana Scholarship Secretariat because I had previously um, interviewed with them for a slot to study medicine outside Ghana, but I didn't make any of the lists. So. Well, they gave me a call when um, they got a slot to go to Cuba and study medicine and I took it. So that's how my journey began. It was a bittersweet experience studying in Cuba. I mean, Cuba is uh, a communist country, as most people know. It's also a country that is at loggerheads so with the most powerful country in the world, the United States. So with the blockade, a lot of things weren't available. Internet was a huge problem. Access to information was another problem to, to um, huddle with. It, was, it wasn't easy studying there, but they had their good moments. They were very friendly people. They helped us adjust. Um, I, we didn't experience much of racism. I didn't experience it at all. And I think all in all, it was a good time studying in Cuba. So, um, Cuba's way of medicine is mainly a community-based um, um, approach. So they deal with promotion, prevention, when their people are, are educated due to that free education system they have. So most people come to the hospital knowing um, exactly what they have, what they take, what's happening. Well, it doesn't usually happen here. So moving from a place where people understand what is happening to them and what to do and having to come into um, a space where you have to talk to people to understand what's happening. Sometimes they won't even accept it from the beginning. It was quite a challenge. So transitioning was tough. But now I think after almost a decade of practicing here, um, it's, it's, it's been good. I'm okay. I've adjusted very well. It's, it has really changed. There's, there's been a lot of improvements. More work needs to be done. But before I left, we had a national health insurance. I benefited from it myself. I'm back. I realized more hospitals have been opened. The rich hospital we left, I came back to see a new rich hospital. More have been opened. Private insurance have popped up. So um, I can say there have been great improvements. We are now going into the community. We are doing a bit more of preventive medicine, unlike at first. So yes, we have a lot to do, but I think it's gotten better. So Spanish was six months. The course itself was six months. That was, that was enough for you to be able to communicate with people, especially in the classroom. But going out, I think it was my whole stay there. Every day we learned. Every day we picked up something. So six months was what we used before we entered pre-medicine. But the language itself, going into the cities, talking to the people, I think it was practically my whole life. <laughs> All right. it, it wasn't that difficult. Spanish, I, I dare say Spanish is even easier than English. So it wasn't too difficult. Um, and anytime they realized you were struggling, they were quick to give you options 
to go by so um i think the people were ready to teach and were ready to learn so communication wasn't a bit of it, it wasn't it wasn't a problem the food <laughs> the food the food and family those were the two things I miss. You know, Cubans don't eat pepper. So you can imagine as a Ghanaian moving from Ghana, a home where we eat a lot of that spicy food, fufu and soup. Yes, moving to an entirely different place where is what we call Aro con frijoles, that's rice and beans. Uh, with cassava, yuca, it was, it was, it was a lot. But we adjusted fairly. Yes, we missed that, and then we also missed family because communication wasn't even, um, uh, it wasn't the best. So to calling home to find out how they were doing was a challenge. And you can imagine staying for six months or three months before things got a bit better without talking to your family. I think those were the two things I missed. So my favorite Cuban food was arroz amarillo con chuleta. It's curried rice with um, pork. Ah, okay. okay. My favorite Cuban food was um, arroz amarillo con chuleta. It was curried rice with pork. Yes, yes, why not? I will. They have they have one of the best health at least when I practiced or when I schooled there, they had one of the best health systems in the world. So now they are facing a lot of challenges, but I still will advise everyone I meet to go to Cuba if they can. So my area of interest, public health. And I hope to specialize in that, become a public health specialist. Very soon. <laughs> Okay, so my advice to young women in the whole of Africa who want to go into um, healthcare or want to study medicine, I would say first you should have the interest, have the interest and build up the passion. Um, I pray and I hope that you don't go in with the with the idea of you're going to make a lot of money there's not a lot of money in healthcare but if you are able to build their passion have the interest with time you'll be able to do great things and go far is the most important thing to so have the interest and the passion in medicine